Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and welcome to Command Power, a show where we talk about Magic the Gathering with a focus on Commander. And today we're going to continue with our Dominaria United spoilers. We have a lot of new spoilers today, so let's jump right in. Starting off, we have Ellis Ilkor, Sadistic Pilgrim for one white and one black, a 2 2 legendary creature, Ferection Core Cleric, with Death Touch. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Whenever another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. This is a really good commander for aristocrat decks, and it'll also probably go in the 99 of those decks. Because it just does everything you want, really. When creatures come in, you're going to gain life, and when they die, you're going to drain your opponents. I think as a commander, this is actually kind of relevant, because it just means you'll always have access to this. And for only two mana, you can recast it very cheaply, even if it dies a couple times. So this seems like a great addition to Aristocrats. Okay, next up we have Baird, our Givian Recruiter. For one red and one white, we have a 2-2 legendary creature, Human Soldier. At the beginning of your end step, if you control a creature with power greater than its base power, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. That's a really, really cool triggered condition, which we haven't really seen before, but it's kind of wasted on a card that is actually pretty low in power level, because just getting a 1-1 one, one every turn cycle is probably not really going to do it. And also my usual criticism of Boros having pretty samey commanders still applies. This is just another token commander in Boros. Next up, Vohar Vodalian Desecrator. One blue and one black. I really like the art on this. It's a legendary creature, Ferection, Merfolk Wizard, a 1-2, and it has tap, draw a card, then discard a card. If you discarded an instant or sorcery card this way, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. And two, sacrifice Vohar, Vodalian Desecrator. You may cast target, instant, or sorcery card from your graveyard this turn. If that spell would be put into your graveyard, exile it instead. Activate only as a sorcery. This is low on power level, but pretty high on cool factor. So drawing and discarding is really good and pinging your opponent and gaining life yourself is also pretty good. So I really like that first ability. The second ability is just gravy. I mean, it lets you recast things from your graveyard, which is very nice. You still need to pay the mana though, and Vohar is also going to die when you do it. So it's a little bit weaker than it could be. Also, the fact that it's limited to activating only as a sorcery kind of hurts it because it means that lots of reactive spells can't really be played, like counter spells and stuff like that. So I think it's a fine card. It's a cool commander and some people will enjoy building around it, but there's better cards. Next up we have Garna, Bloodfist of Keld. For one colorless, one black and two red, it's a legendary creature, human berserker, a 4-3. Whenever another creature you control dies, draw a card if it was attacking. Otherwise, Garner Bloodfist of Kel deals one damage to each opponent. This is deceptively strong. So whenever you swing in with your creatures, they're going to have to kill them or take a lot of damage. If they don't block, then you hit them for however much damage you're attacking for. But if they do block and kill them, then suddenly you're drawing a bunch of cards and refueling your hand and your board. So this is a very good card against your creatures dying. You can also just sacrifice your creatures once they're attacking and you still get to draw a card. You can even deal damage and then wait till after the combat damage step but before combat is ending, your creatures still count as attacking and sacrifice them. So you can deal damage and draw cards and have your cake and eat it. Um, Otherwise, you get to deal one damage whenever somebody wipes the board for each creature that dies. That is also not irrelevant, and it says each opponent, so it's the best possible wording. This is a very strong card, really, for four mana, and the stats aren't even bad on it either, so great. Next up, we have Love Song of Night and Day. It's a saga with read ahead. It's two colorless and one white, and the first chapter says, you and target opponent draw two cards. The second chapter says, create a 1-1 white bird creature token with flying. And the third one says, put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. The power level is pretty low on this one overall. Um, I wouldn't normally talk about it, except I really love the art. And if you don't know, it's based on the uh, story from Mirage and Visions, I think. Uh, all of the cards had a flavor text that, when you put them all together, made up a song. And this is referencing that song, so it's really cool. Also, the first ability is kind of interesting because we don't see that in white very often. Usually it's really bad to let your opponents draw, but you drawing two as well might almost be good enough when you add in the other modes. By itself, 
I would say you'd never play, uh, you draw two and opponent draws two. But when you have two other abilities tacked on, I think this card maybe does enough in some decks that you might consider playing it. Next up you have Maria, Scholar of Antiquity. One colorless, one red, one green. For a 3-3 legendary creature, Elf Artificer. Quite an unusual creature type. Tap an untapped non-token artifact you control, add green. And tap two untapped non-token artifacts you control. Exile the top card of your library. You may play it this turn. Well, this is really unique, really spicy. We haven't really seen anything like this in Gruul. Gruul does not care about artifacts other than to smash them normally. So I'm not really sure what's going on here. It's cool that they've put non-token because otherwise this would just be absolutely busted with treasures and we already have enough things that are good with treasures. So this can actually work kind of like a stacks commander because you can put in stuff like winter orb and horrible things like that and then tap them for mana so this could turn out to be really nasty if people want to build around it like that you add in the roaring plex that doesn't let lands untap and stuff like that and this could be really unpleasant it also lets you get pseudo card advantage by tapping two artifacts you control so it kind of does it all it's a really really solid one and it's going to launch a whole new style of gruel deck so i'm all for it next up we have vodalian hex catcher for one colorless and one blue it's a creature merfolk wizard one one this is another one in the cycle of tribal lords for two mana this one has flash, other merfolk you control get plus one plus one, and sacrifice a merfolk counter target non-creature spell unless its controller pays one. Woo! This is really good in merfolk decks. It's really overloaded. It feels better than the other ones almost because it also has flash tacked on. It has an ability as well as the other abilities that it grants your tribal creatures and the buff. Um, sacrificing to counter non-creature spells is kind of feel bad because it'll probably lead to a lot of moments where people forget you have this up and they tap out and then you just whoops get them it can sacrifice itself it can sacrifice other merfolk so this is gonna be really good merfolk decks are gonna be very happy about this next up we have Thran portal it's a land gate it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or fewer other lands. As Thran Portal enters the battlefield, choose a basic land type. Thran Portal is the chosen type in addition to its other types. And mana abilities of Thran Portal cost an additional one life to activate. Now you may be thinking, this is a really strange card. It only taps for one mana because you can only choose one basic land type when it comes in. So why does it have all these restrictions like paying one life and coming in tapped if you control more than two other lands? And the main reason it does is because of domain. It lets you fix whatever domain you're missing and it effectively lets you add one domain more than you would normally be able to have in decks. For example, if you're running a red-green deck, suddenly you can have blue domain by having an island in there too. The fact that it's a gate is also nice for gate decks because that just gives them one more to play with. Is this card strong? No, not really. It's incredibly niche. It's only gonna go in domain decks and gate decks, uh, but it's probably gonna be pretty decent in both of those. Next up we have Leaf Crowned Visionary for green and green. It's a creature, Elf Druid 1-1. One, one. It's another one of the tribal cards. A bit weird that the mana cost is different, that it's two green pips instead of one colorless and one green. Other elves you control get plus one plus one. And whenever you cast an elf spell, you may pay green if you do draw a card. Woo! That is a really good one. Uh, the red one gave you card advantage. This one also gives you card advantage as long as you have one green up for each elf you play. I don't know, this seems really, really good for elf decks because they often want to be drawing cards. And this just has the tribal buff and the card draw, both in the same card. Uh, this seems very, very strong. Next up we have Balmor, Battle Mage, Captain for one blue, one red, a 1-3 legendary creature, Bird Wizard with flying. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, creatures you control get plus one plus zero and gain trample until end of turn. So this is another almost Magecraft ability because it doesn't trigger on copying. And it seems pretty good because you're actually giving all your creatures plus one plus zero and trample every time you cast an instant or sorcery. This could go very well with instants or sorceries that make tokens such as Dragon Fodder. It also works really well with stuff like Talrand, Sky Summoner, all of those payoffs for playing spells that let you make creatures. Suddenly your creatures, tokens are all getting bigger and bigger as you keep playing more spells. You just play cheap cantrips and eventually overwhelm your opponent. Seems pretty cool. Rith, Liberated Primeval. It is two colorless, one red, one green, one white. Legendary creature, dragon, 5-5 five, five, flying, ward 2. Other dragons you control have ward 2. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature or planeswalker an opponent controlled was dealt excess damage this turn, create a 4-4 red dragon creature token with flying. 
Okay, that is a very unique triggered ability. This card seems pretty overloaded. For five mana, it just does a lot of stuff. It has its own protection inbuilt. It gives all your other dragons a little bit of protection. And then the question remains, how easy is this ability gonna be to trigger? Because it does require people to block your dragons. You probably want to make sure you have some way to force them to block if you're playing this. Once you do force them to block, you're probably gonna be dealing excess damage here or there for sure. So you're probably going to get one dragon at the end of your turn. That's fine. It's not the highest in power level, but giving protection to all your dragons is really good. I see this card better as one in the 99 rather than as a commander. Leyline Binding. It's five colorless and one white for an enchantment with flash and domain. It costs one less to cast for each basic land type among lands you control. And when it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. So it's basically an oblivion ring that has flash and can cost one white if you meet the requirements. You have to have a domain of four for this to be better than oblivion ring really on rate in terms of how much you're paying. Obviously the flash is nice. But I would still say that unless you're a very dedicated domain deck, this shouldn't really see much play. So next up we have Electrostatic Infantry for one colorless and one red. It's a 1-2 creature Dwarf Wizard with Trample. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Electrostatic Infantry. Well, this is what I talked about in one of the previous videos that we we're going to need to see more dwarves because there's a lot of commanders that care about dwarves now. This seems like a really good dwarf because having inbuilt trample and getting a plus one plus one counter every time you cast an instant or sorcery spell means that this guy's going to get decently big. I think this is a really good one for those kind of decks. Rivers of the Claw. One colorless, one black and one red for a legendary creature, Viashino Warlock. A 3-3 three, three with menace. You can tap it to add two mana in any combination of colors. Spend this mana only to cast dragon creature spells. And once during each of your turns, you may cast a dragon creature spell from your graveyard. Whenever you cast a dragon creature spell from your graveyard, it gains when this dragon dies, exile it. Okay, this is really good. It does a lot of stuff for only three mana. Just with the menace and adding two mana in any combination of colors for dragons, that would already probably be good enough to be the commander of a dragon deck because that's actually some serious ramp. But then just being able to cast a dragon from your graveyard each turn, that is amazing. Of course, you can't keep doing it with the same dragon because it will get exiled after the first time but you don't even care just being able to recast dragons from the graveyard whew, that is going to be a very strong commander and basically an auto include in most dragon decks that are red and black tatiova steward of tides green green and blue for a legendary creature merfolk druid 3-3 three, three. land creatures you control have flying Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, if you control seven or more lands, up to one target land you control becomes a 3-3 elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. So they keep being creatures uh, after end of turn. It's not an until end of turn effect. Eventually you're going to have a pretty decent board of land creatures. You obviously want to find ways to make extra land drops because that way you can turn all your previous lands into land creatures as well. The fact that they have flying and haste is gonna make it quite hard to deal with for some deck. And she can actually bring a lot of damage to the table out of nowhere sometimes if you play stuff that puts multiple lands into play at once. Next up we have Joda the Unifier for white, blue, black, red, green, a legendary creature, human wizard, 5-5, five, five. Legendary creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of legendary creatures you control. Whenever you cast a legendary spell from your hand, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a legendary non-land card with lesser mana value. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So the first part of this card is basically Hero's Podium. That would be pretty good, but probably not good enough by itself for a five color commander. However, it gives Cascade to all of your legendary cards, although they can only Cascade into other legends. So that's amazing, really. You can't Cascade into lands, however, but still, just being able to Cascade every time you pay a legendary is a really, really sweet ability, and I love this commander because Cascade is one of my favorite things to do. Valiant Veteran for one colorless and one white. It's a 2-2 creature core soldier. It is the white version of the Lord Cycle, and it has other soldiers you control get plus one, plus one. And three colorless, white, white, exile, valiant, veteran from your graveyard, put a plus one, plus one counter on each soldier you control. This seems less good than the others in a tribe that is already worse than the others. So it's in a tribe that's worse than elves, merfolk, and goblins. And I mean, it's fine. The fact that you can exile it from your graveyard is good, but the others all have abilities that are relevant while they are in play. This one just has the pump ability, and the other you have to wait for it to die and then pay five to use it just doesn't seem as good as the others. Next up, we have Vesuvan Duplomancy for three colorless, one blue. Whenever you cast a spell that targets only a single artifact or creature you control, create a token that's a copy of that artifact or creature, except it's not legendary. 
So a really cool ability. We've seen something pretty similar previously with Orvar, the old form. And this one is going to be a little bit harder to remove because it's an enchantment. It does require a very specific deck built around, so it probably just goes in Orvar. But sweet card nonetheless. Next up is Aaron, Benalia's Ruin. White, white, black for a 3-3 legendary creature. Ferection, human with menace and white, black. Tap, sacrifice another creature, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. So another aristocrat card. I'm starting to think that they're doing the same thing with Black White that they're doing with Boris and Selesny. Just kind of pigeonholing themselves into always making aristocrat commanders in Black White. I don't know why, but it seems to happen with White more than with any other color that they get pigeonholed in the type of commanders they make. Anyway, I mean, this is good. This is really good. It's a pump effect for your go wide Black White Orzov decks, and it's also a sacrifice outlet. So I can't say it's bad, however, it's not the most interesting commander again. Next up, we have Knight of Dawn's Light for one colorless, one white. First strike, if you would gain life, you gain that much life plus one instead. You can pay one colorless and one white, and Knight of Dawn's Light gets plus one plus one until end of turn, and it's a 2-2. Two -two. Just quickly wanted to mention this because it's another effect that lets you gain an extra life, so this is going to be great in life gain decks. Next up, we have the Elder Dragon War for two colorless and two red. It's a saga with read a hand. Chapter 1 says the Elder Dragon War deals two damage to each creature and each opponent. Chapter 2 says discard any number of cards, then draw that many cards. And Chapter 3 says create a 4-4 red dragon creature token with flying. From what I've read so far, people seem to not really like this one. I think it's quite a decent card. For four mana, you can get a dragon with flying. You can just skip straight to that chapter. That's pretty decent. You could also get a discard any number of cards, then draw that many cards, and then a dragon with flying. That's also good if you have a pretty meh hand. You can just wheel it away and draw a bunch more things. That's better than it looks. And then the first chapter is actually not as bad as I think people think it is. Being able to wipe the board of small creatures can often be relevant. It's good against token decks. And there's a lot of go wide decks in the format right now, at least where I'm playing. So if you're some kind of control deck, then this is not actually that bad at all. It's gonna let you wipe the board of small stop, then refuel your hand, and then you're just gonna get a 4-4 creature with flying for your trouble. I think this is quite good for four mana. And finally, the last card for the day is Shield Wall Sentinel. It's for four colorless mana, an artifact creature, Golem 1 3 with Defender. And when Shield Wall Sentinel enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature card with Defender, refill it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Okay, so that's exactly what you want in a Defender deck, a tutor for any of your defenders. Not much to say here, it's just gonna go in every Defender deck, and it's really good. Okay, so those are all the cards I'm gonna be covering today. If you have any comments, please let me know in the comments section below. I really read all the comments and respond to all of them as well. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like and or subscribe. It really helps the channel and I'm really grateful. Thank you so much and until next time, take care.